This is going to be homework help for balance ion equation. And uh, what I've got here is I've got my nomenclature list with my ions. And at the bottom, I've got my solubility rules to memorize. Uh, and I've got an example of a type of problem that you're seeing, actually two types of problems here. We're going to work through this first one here. And if we were naming compounds, we would see that so this is sodium oxalate. Sodium ion is Na+. Plus. Oxalate ion is right here, C2O42 minus, the oxalate ion. Because oxalate is 2 minus and sodium is plus 1, that means that we need two sodium ions. And in the uh, homework problem for this, they do go ahead and give you the products, um, but we're going to do this as uh, a um, double replacement reaction. And so we can tell that it's a double replacement reaction, and then I'll actually refer down here because this one is different. This one is single replacement. You can see that in both of these compounds, there is a cation that is a metal. Here it's sodium. Here the ca metal cation is calcium. That means these are ionic compounds. And down here we see sodium, but here oh, we only see bromine. Bromine is a non-metal. That means this is not an ionic compound. Um, anyway, so some hints there. What you do is you have to switch partners for a double replacement. That means the sodium plus is going to go with the chloride minus. And while the problem tells you this, um, uh, according, uh, I'm going to use my solubility, sort of the problem tells you what the answers are for the products. This as far as solid, liquid, gas, or aqueous. Um, I'm going to use my solubility rules to say all common compounds of group 1 and sodiums in group 1 are soluble. Soluble things are aqueous. So that's how we know this is aqueous here. Our other compound is going to take our calcium and pair it with our oxalate. Calcium is plus 2. Oxalate is minus 2, so those balance each other. Then we look on our list, and it says, this is extreme zoom in, so except for rule number 1, which says that all common compounds of group 1 and ammonium are soluble, carbonates, hydroxides, oxides, silicates, and up oxalates are insoluble. And insoluble means it's going to be solid. So, zoom out. We know that since calcium is not in group 1, it's going to be solid and insoluble. And this is again where balance ion equation starts you off. But what we're then going to do is we know um, to break up any ionic compound that is aqueous uh, or soluble because it will be a strong electrolyte. Oh, I do need two sodium chlorides there. Now it's balanced. All right, so my total ionic equation is going to have two sodium ions, which are aqueous plus an oxalate ion, which is aqueous. And you can see that all my um, reactants are aqueous. And then I'll just put my products down here. I have, I get my two sodiums and my two chlorides here. And they will both be aqueous. And solids, as we will see shortly, liquids and gases all stay together. And the only aqueous thing that ever stays together are weak acids. And I don't think there are any in this problem. But our solid stays together right there. And to get to our net ionic equation, 
we cancel out the things that are on both sides exactly the same. What I mean by that is two sodium plus aqueouses and two sodium plus aqueouses, those are identical. And sodium is a spectator ion. We also have the same thing for our chlorides. And what we're left with is our, and we can do it in whatever order. I'll do it in the order that you might typically see it. Calcium ion plus car, uh, oxalate ion, not carbonate, oxalate, two minus. Those are our two reactant species. go to calcium oxalate solid. And uh, that's our net ionic equation. Uh, we have a bond forming an ionic bond between the calcium ions and the oxalate ions. And a shortcut approach to doing net ionic equations is look at whatever your solid is and then pick out those ions on the reactant side and that's gonna be what's included. Now if we were to do a net ionic here we can see that we have one aqueous species. Oh, I should write my products. This is single replacement. And for single replacement, we can see that we have a non-metal here and a non-metal here. That means they're gonna replace each other. What that means is my product is going to be NaBr. It is just NaBr because sodium is plus one and bromide is minus one. All sodium species are soluble, which means this is aqueous. And my chlorine is gonna be kicked out. Chlorine is a diatomic. We also know it is one of our gases, and so it is just there. Okay, that is what we'll call our overall reaction. From there, we break up species for our total ionic equation that are soluble ionic compounds. Oop, sorry. Stop, balance, I need two of those and two of those, which means I need two sodiums plus two chlorides. Solids, liquids, and gases do not break up. And why is that? Because they don't break up in solution in the aqueous phase. This bromine is together as one molecule. This calcium oxalate is together in the bottom of your test tube as a solid phase. Um, but when we have something like sodium chloride aqueous or calcium chloride aqueous, in aqueous solution, each of those calcium and those chloride ions are separated and surrounded by their hydration shells of water molecules. That's what the total ionic equation shows. But the Br2 stays together. We get two sodium ions plus two bromide ions plus Cl2 gas. And in this particular case, the only, let's see, the only spectator ion is the sodium ion because the chlorides become chlorine, they do not cancel, and the bromine becomes bromide ions. So we're net ionic. And I'll just write it in order this time, though the order does not matter. Will be two chlorides plus bromine liquid goes to two bromides plus chlorine gas. Hopefully this helps a little bit.